This is video number three for sections 6.7 and 7.1, finding x-intercepts using factoring. So as we've been saying, we're about to jump into quadratic functions. One of the things we will want to do is determine the x-intercepts of a quadratic function. And it turns out that the factoring method we've been looking at is one way that may help us to do that. Here is a particular quadratic function, f of x equals 4x squared minus 9. Let's try to find the x-intercepts. Finding x-intercepts is the same no matter what chapter we're in, no matter what kind of function we're looking at, you always do the same thing. You set the y equal to 0 y in this case would be the f of x. So if I want to find x-intercepts, I'm going to replace that f of x with a 0 and then solve for x. Well, as soon as I put that 0 there, I realize, oh, this is a quadratic equation. The highest exponent here is a 2. So if I want to solve this quadratic equation, the factoring method is so far the only method we've learned. Let's see, I don't have any fractions or parentheses to get rid of. And I already have a 0 on one side, so that's kind of nice, which means I can immediately launch into factoring this other side. I don't have a GCF that I can pull out. I count the number of terms. I have two terms. That would be difference of squares, difference of cubes, sum of cubes. I think you can pretty easily see that this is a difference of squares. I've got the minus sign and I've got two perfect squares. So this is going to factor a plus b. a would be 2x since 2x times 2x is 4x squared. b would be 3 since 3 times 3 is 9. a plus b and then a minus b. So 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. Once the factoring is fully done. Then I move on to the zero product principle. I have two items in this problem that are being multiplied together for an answer of zero. What that tells me is that either 2x plus 3 is zero or 2x minus 3 is equal to zero. If I solve each of these simple equations now, then I will have my answers. It would be subtracting 3, and then dividing by 2, and this other one would be adding 3, and then dividing by 2. And I've ended up with two values of x, uh, negative 3 halves and positive 3 halves. Typically, we like to write our intercepts as ordered pairs. So this first one would be negative 3 halves, comma, 0. Remember, we started with a y of 0, along with positive 3 halves, comma, 0. Side note, when you're entering these things into my math lab, my math lab wants a comma here in between the two sets of parentheses. So just to point that out. One comment worth noting here, uh, we got two x-intercepts, and that's kind of different for us. Back when we did linear functions, uh, there was typically just one x-intercept. So what's going on here? Well, this will make more sense uh, after the next video. But if you were to take this quadratic function and draw a graph of it in your graphing calculator, what you would see is something like this, a parabola in other words. And uh, this particular parabola crosses the x-axis twice, once at negative 1 and a half and once at positive 1 and a half. And so it does make sense, I think, once you understand what the graph looks like. Also, just to reiterate, the factoring method is just one method for finding x-intercepts or for solving this particular type of equation. Uh, I was fortunate here because I could factor this polynomial. Uh, however, if it was not able to be factored, for example, think about the simple situation f of x equals 4x squared minus 7. And it seems like pretty similar type of function here, but if you replace this f of x with a 0, you will quickly find that this 
polynomial over here is prime. So you wouldn't be able to use the factoring method. This guy does have two x-intercepts, and we will be able to find them. We're just going to have to learn some other methods first.